Hi everybody and welcome back to another week of painting, easy oil painting. Did you like last week's tutorial, the snow scene? It was very nice, wasn't it? Um, I have it finished and uh, hanging in my wall, on my wall, in my home, um, up, in, up at the top of my stairs, okay? So I'm going to show you what it looks like, okay? Take a look at this and see what you think. Now isn't that lovely? Um, nice, warm, subtle colours against that wallpaper at the back I think is fantastic and it's really kind of, comp I think the blue really kind of complements those fawns and the beiges, the kind of cappuccino colours, I think they really kind of complement each other. Um, so yeah, I think it is a huge success. I may stick a frame on it, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know what to do about the frame. I might frame it. I think it might be just that little bit more eye-catching with a frame. So, yes, I think it turned out wonderful. I'm very, very happy with that. And I hope you've enjoyed that as well. Now, this week, I'm going to do something completely different. Um, I, I'm going to paint a nice spring scene. A nice kind of... Uh, kind of grasses with some kind of daisies coming into it, something nice and spring um, themed because we're kind of heading into the spring now and uh, Peter in the restaurant where I have my paintings hanging suggested, you know, why are you not going to change the theme of the artwork in the restaurant? Why not go for something a little more spring kind of theme, so colourful um, flowers, that's, that sort of kind of angle, do you know what I mean? So I said, yeah, we'll, we'll try a couple. So I'm gonna paint one to, uh, today for you. It's on a 20 by 16 canvas, so it's a nice size canvas. And it's gonna be, it's it's a very subtle kind of a painting to look at. It's very kind of, it's very calming and relaxing to look at. It's just a very kind of a fuzzy background with some daisies kind of popping up at the side. Uh, one or two little other coloured kind of flowers as well, but it's kind of simple, but very, very subtle. And I think this is going to look stunning in a frame, it really is. I think it'll really catch someone's eye. So I'm going to try that this week, okay? I hope you don't mind um, taking a break from the landscape. Just for one week, you know, we'll go back to normal, uh, or normal landscape painting next week, okay? So it's just, it's just this week. I think something nice and fun, um, something much more relaxed and less kind of... I suppose less tense for the beginner so just something that you can just get your brushes out and have a go all right so um yeah i'm going to set my camera up here behind me so don't go anywhere i hope you like this and thank you so much for watching see you very very soon okay here we go um there is the photograph now isn't that just lovely i think a lovely subtle spring kind of a scene with some nice little daisies popping up we could even add one or two extra little daisies here and there if you want i think this would make a lovely little composition uh something nice to be nice nice and free and loose with your brush okay now i will tell you my colors i have a paper palette here um, i have titanium white naples yellow burnt umber some cadmium yellow some phthalo blue cobalt blue some crimson some black some cadmium red and some born soy enna and um, i think we will have enough in those color uh, you know i just want to have a nice colorful palette for this type of a scene now i'm going to put some more cadmium yellow on my palette there okay because i'm going to need a lot more than that i think and i'm thinking also uh, i have another cadmium yellow here as well in fact i have two i have cadmium yellow hue which is another, it's a very orangey kind of a yellow. Um, that's nice, I like that. And I also have cadmium yellow deep. Now this is a very deep, rich kind of a yellow. Um, I normally use cadmium yellow pale for most, for, for all my painting really, because it's just a nice all round kind of a yellow. This is a nice orangey kind of a yellow. It's lovely, I don't know if you can see that or not now, but it's really very nice and orangey. I might try a little bit of that, just for, there's a very nice warm kind of a glowy yellowy kind of color in the background there and hints of it here and there i think that might be a nice color we could mix this but i think just to have it on my palette just in case do you know what i mean because it's nice to have a good selection of colors you know so i'm going to start off with my stubby brush my little stubby brush <coughs> i beg your pardon now you can see on the top there it's just very whitey yellow, isn't it? It's almost pure white, but it's very vibrant white. And I think I'm going to try just some cadmium yellow with some white for that. So I'm dampening my brush now. I have some turpentine here, look. Some regular turpentine with a little drop of linseed oil in it. And that's where the yellow colour comes from. The tiny little drop of linseed oil. And the linseed oil helps kind of 
the brush and the paint to sort of go around nice and smoothly and really kind of uh, blend together. Now I did prime this twice. It's a canvas board, um, 16 by 20. I primed it twice and then I gave it a light rub of sandpaper. Okay, just a very, very light rub. That's all, just to kind of take the rough surface off of that. And now what I would normally do is take a bit of linseed oil and rub some linseed oil across that, but I don't think I need to. I'm going to be using lots of thick paint with this. Um, right, so let's just dip my brush into my turpentine, okay? Just dip it in once and just soak off the excess on the tissue like so, okay? Just kind of, do you know what I mean? So it's not soaking, it's not saturated. It's just a damp kind of a brush, really damp. Now let's take some white, lots of white, look. Because we have a big area to cover, so let's go in there with lots and lots and lots of white paint. Let's take loads of it, look. And then, let's take a touch of cadmium yellow. A little bit now goes a very long way. Now you see, that's even too yellowy still. So I'll go back into my white. Another wonderful colour for this would have been lemon yellow. I have a lemon yellow as well in my box, which I had for years and years and years. I use lemon yellow if I want really very bright whites, but... I think this is not too bad. And you can see how kind of creamy that is, you see? It's like a very thin cream out of a tub. All right? Now, it's not quite running down the palette, but it's almost running. Okay? That's the kind of consistency I want. Now, let's just go up here and scrub that right across my canvas here, right along the top, all right? Everywhere, all, all across the top there. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Now... Let's pick up some more of that. You see, it's gone already, you see? So that's why I said mix a lot of it. Mix plenty of this colour. We're going to need loads. And I may just pick up white on its own and go in there and add a bit of white on its own. Now, on the camera, I think that's probably going to look very whitey. And it is. Because for some reason, the colours on the camera are not kind of... They're not the very same as the colours I'm actually putting on. There's a slight difference in the colours on the camera. I don't know why. I don't know if there's a lighting in here or what's the story, but um, I really have to get some proper fluorescent lights for in here because they're very kind of yellowy. I kind of mix and match some lighting I have in the ceiling up overhead. So I have some kind of warm fluorescent tubes and I have a couple of cold, bluey kind of fluorescent tubes as well to try and find a nice balance. But I'm finding it's a little bit yellow, a little bit on the yellow side, isn't it? Um, especially when you're looking at my face and stuff like that. I'm very, very yellow, like I've been up in the sun for too long. I need to try and get new lighting, proper, proper lighting, but it's just expensive, you know what I mean? Um, right, now, as we come down, I'm going to try some of this cadmium yellow, which one was it? Uh, cadmium yellow deep. I'm going to pick up some cadmium yellow deep. Now, see that? It's a very luminous kind of a yellow. Um, let me pick up another little bit. And into that, I might put a very small hint of burnt sienna. Just a touch. And look, that'll give me that slightly orangey kind of a yellow. That's exactly what I want. And I want to soften that now up into that colour first. So come right across here now, okay? And it's quite dry, so I'm going to just add a touch of turpentine again. Okay, little touches of turpentine go a long way. So some of that cadmium yellow, now you could use just cadmium yellow regular with some cyanide. It's probably the very same thing, do you know that now? Look, let's try it. Cadmium yellow, pale, with some cyanide. Look, it's, it's the very same. Look, do you know what I'll do? I'll forget about this cadmium yellow deep, because you might not have that in your palette. So I'll just continue on with my regular cadmium yellow, okay? Which I do every week. Now, I'm going to kind of soften that here and there, up into that colour up there, look, so it's kind of... I'm kind of scraping it along here and there, up and down, up and down, just to create some different shapes, kind of, it's very sort of misty and mysterious and very kind of um, smudgy. Do you, get, do you get that kind of a feeling by looking at the photograph? Everything is very kind of smudgy, which I love. I love that kind of a feeling. Now, I may still even take my soft blender brush look and soften some of that together as well. That really helps. Okay. Now we have a lovely soft kind of smudgy effect there, don't we? Disappearing up. Now, as we come down, I want to start adding a little cyanide again. 
and I'm going to put a hint of crimson into that. I can see a little hint of crimson here and there in that colour. So I'm just going to sort of put a little flick of that through, just not too much. That's plenty. And I'm going to then dip my brush in my turpentine, like so, soak it, and then clean off that colour just very quickly, okay? You see? Now, it's pretty much 90% gone. And what I'm going to do then is pick up a little hint of that white with the yellow again. And just kind of soften. Soften a lot of that through. Now you can leave little flicks of it showing if you wish. Look, just little tiny flicks here and there. But I'm going to soften it for the most part. Soften it right in. Now next we have... It kind of goes into a lovely green, doesn't it? First, I'm going to put a little band of cadmium yellow just along here and there, look. A tiny drop of turpentine just to moisten the brush. If you find it's too wet, the problem with this is if the colour is too wet, it's going to run. Um, so I just put on very little and I kind of spread it around, then I just kind of scrub it around, you see what I mean? So if it's too wet, just dab, just dab it on your tissue to take off some of that turpentine, okay? Now, I'm fairly happy with that. I'm going to start going into green now because we have a lot of green down here, don't we? Lots of lovely greens. And I'm going to dampen my brush again. So it's, see, it's very thin there now, almost watery, okay? I'm going to take some cadmium yellow. And it's a warm kind of a green, so I'm not going to use... Um, Cobalt or phthalo. I think I might try some black. Now black and yellow make a wonderful green. Wait and see. Okay, watch this and see. Let's take a hint of black. Now look at that. A nice dark, rich, earthy kind of a green. And I want the same consistency as I did at the very start. A very creamy kind of a consistency, you see? So it spreads along, it spreads along then very nicely. There. Now it's quite thin, I'll be honest. It is quite thin. You can see. You can see right through the paint. It's very transparent and watery. But that's because I just want to fill in this background colour quite quickly. And I want to get on to kind of concentrating on flowers and that kind of thing. So let's mix up another little bit of this. So I'll take lots of cadmium yellow and a little hint of black. Now, small amounts of black at a time because it's a very strong colour. Okay? Here we go. Coming across. Now, I'm going to take my soft blender brush again. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want. And I'm just going to soften this kind of up here and there into the colours overhead, okay? Look, going right up here, here and there, all the way up. You can even go right up into that whitey colour as well, if you like, okay? Soften it out. I've just been very kind of loose now with this, very kind of loose and free and just sort of having, having a bit of fun with this. That's all. It's all a bit of fun, isn't it? Okay, now, right, at this stage what I'm going to do is take some rich, thick yellow and just start putting in some hints of little flicks of yellowy grasses kind of here and there, just in the top, up at the top, just to sort of give a hint that there's a little bit more detail coming into focus. Okay, that's all. And as it comes down, it's going to start getting really dark now down at the bottom. And I want this nice and dark so that these white daisies really show off lovely. So that takes plenty now of cadmium red, or cadmium yellow, I'm going off my game. I'm losing the plot, everyone. Cadmium yellow, a nice bit of black, and then I'm going to start adding little hints of blue. Um, so should we use cobalt or phthalo? I think we'll try cobalt because it's a little bit more forgiving. And you can get away with much more with cobalt. Cobalt blue is very easy going. He doesn't mind if you take too much. Okay, you see? He gives you a chance. Thalo Blue doesn't like to give chances at all. Thalo Blue is very dominating and he likes to be the focus and the centre of attention. But Cobalt Blue is much more forgiving, you see? You can take as much as you want and it won't 
change the color too much. So I think I'll play safe and stick with cobalt just for now. Cobalt is a nice old fella. There we go. Okay, coming down nicely now. Coming down very nicely. And it's lots of fun. This It's just nice to be light, nice and loose and free for a change. It really is. Um, you know, like it's... Don't get me wrong. I love painting nice little landscapes with lots of detail and stuff like that as well. But sometimes it's lovely to just grab your brushes like this and just lash on lots of colour. Is that the correct term? That's my cork slang now kind of coming out. My, uh, my Irish kind of slang. Just lash on lots of colour. There we go. Let's get some more black. Um, I want to go really dark down at this corner here. Again, I keep dipping into little dabs of turpentine because I do want this wet. I want it to kind of go along nicely. I don't want to be having to work too hard to cover the canvas, if you know what I mean. You see? There we go. And I work generally in thin layers like this. So I put on thin layers, then I work thicker layers on top of these. So this is just kind of an undercoat layer here now. I kind of start adding more richer colours onto this very, very soon. Let's get some more blue, some more yellow, and a hint of black. There we go. Scrub it on with your brush. And I kind of generally tend to work quickly. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but it's just kind of natural for me to work quickly, especially with back rooms. I like to get back rooms done quick and then just relax and focus on the nice detailed work in the front. Um, that's just me. Everyone is different. You can take your time if you like. Just take your time. Have a bit of fun. Experiment with different colours. You don't have to copy these colours. Try different colours, you know, by all means. Um, okay, I'm going to try some phthalo blue. Now watch how strong phthalo blue is. Look, you get no chance whatsoever with phthalo. It just likes to dominate the entire, the entire mix. There we are. And I'm going to scrub it around, look, just giving the impression of shadows and darker patches of grass and greenery, all that kind of thing, okay? See what I mean? I'll come up now slightly higher at the sides, I think. And I will leave. Let me actually get some black and some burnt umber for this corner down here. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Look at that. This is going to look really nice now with our white, nice white daisies in front of all of this. Some burnt umber and some black. Again. And now because the background is done, right? Um, I tend to then dip into colour just on its own without any turpentine. So look, black, a uh, little bit of cyanide, and I'll just go on then and mix it on the canvas. Look, I'll mix it right in on the canvas. That's what I like to do. And you get some nice rich coverage then, you see? Nice dark coverage. Let's get some cobalt blue on its own. Now you can see how cobalt blue, I have a lot of cobalt blue here, right? Watch now how it just disappears, you see? Disappears. But if I take a tiny amount of phthalo blue, watch this. It takes over the whole painting, look. Phthalo is just really, really rich. It's a very rich colour. And it kind of demands respect. Do you understand what I mean? You have to respect phthalo blue because if you don't, it will take over your entire painting. I promise it will, if we're not careful. Just be very careful with phthalo. There we go. A couple of little flicks up. And then again, I'll take my soft brush and I'm going to kind of soften. You can even go around in circles, look with this. Soften some of that in there, here and there. Let's go over here. All right. Now, let me just sit back for a moment and take a quick look at this. All right, yeah. I'm happy with that. That's quite nice. Um, now, I can see, looking at the photograph, I can see kind of hints of shapes, different types of shapes going through the picture. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to simply take my small flat brush, okay? It is a number six flat. A small synthetic flat, a very soft brush. Now, a little spot there, but I'm going to get that off there in a moment. There we go. 
Okay, nice soft brush. And with this even dry, I'm basically going to just take some cadmium yellow, look. And let's just go boom, 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 up like that. Let's imagine there's some little nice rich bits of yellow around here and there, kind of flicking around, okay? You see? Just in the background, do you know what I mean? Um, let's put one or two around here. It could be anything. It could be little hints of flowers, or it could be little hints of grasses kind of coming up in the background. It's just to sort of break up the background, that's all it is. Uh, let's take some cadmium yellow up on cyanide, and we could put a couple of those around here and there. You see, and we can soften it in with our fingers as well. So we're just, it's very abstracty. We've lots going on now, lots of abstracty kind of technique coming out here. Um, okay, let's put a bit up around here, look like that. You see? Let's just have a bit of fun, come on. Let's just grab our paints and go for it. This is what it's all about. And this, this is what painting is all about for me, just having a bit of fun, come on. Um, little bits here and there. Look, little squiggles. And you see, you can soften the squiggles in there with your hands. Look, soften them all in. What we're doing is just creating a nice composition. And we're creating something for the viewer to catch your viewer, to catch the viewer's eye. Um, you know, colours. It doesn't have to kind of represent any particular type of subject. But it's all about colours. Now, I can see another lovely colour in there. It's phthalo blue with some white and a little hint of cadmium yellow. I can see a beautiful light kind of a colour popping in here and there. It's really lovely. A little bit more white perhaps. You see, all of this will be softened in eventually. Okay. Let's just soften all this down all the way our fingers down here, okay? There we go. How's that? Perhaps a little bit over here, just to balance the painting out a little bit. And even just some blue on its own. Okay. Put the blue there. And as it comes down, I am going to kind of give it a bit more um, shape, a bit, a little bit more detail, not too much detail, but a little bit. Understand? And my dog is going crazy out there. Can you hear my dog barking at all the other fellas? Just a little hint of detail just around here and there. Um, and perhaps even bringing some warmer greens in as well. Okay, soften them in. Just like that. Alright, going along nicely. Now, what I might do is, just over here, I might put a couple of little flicks in just like that. Okay, just like so. Perhaps one or two around here and there you see i'm using my small flat brush for all of this you don't have to go to extreme lengths and use small detail brushes okay now i'm going to soften some of all this now back in together just a little because i'm kind of focusing on the daisies it's all kind of pretty much about the daisies but I, I know I have all these little hints of colour in the background then, you see? I just want to create that sort of lovely kind of smudgy effect, if you know what I mean. Everything is kind of smudged in together. Let's get it right in there and over our fingers, look. Right in. Up here like that. Scrape it up. Oh. Okay. I'm fairly happy with that. 
Uh, one thing I might do is I might add a little touch of darkness now with my medium stubby brush, some black, some yellow and some phthalo. I might just add a little bit of darkness just right along the bottom there. Just a really, really kind of a dark colour, okay? Just here and there, and then soften it back up then. Now, okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna just sit back and take a quick look at this. Now that's not bad. And because I have used very thin um, layers, it's kind of dried in. It's, you, know, you can kind of see the grain of the canvas. That's because they use a really thin layer of paint. And that's what I wanted to do just for the background. But with the front coming in now, with all these little flowers and stuff like that, I'm, I can really kind of put in nice thick paint and um, really have a bit of fun. Now I can see a nice kind of a bluey flower just in there. I'm going to put a little blue flower. There's a very rich bluey kind of a flower just sort of in the center in here somewhere. I quite like that, so I'm just going to put a little hint of a flower, like this, okay, just in there, and you see, I'm leaving bits of white on the brush, so that's kind of creating the lights of the petals, understand? Well, let's try another little one, let's put kind of hints of blue, just here and there, look. And it's just to bring a touch of colour into the painting, that's all, okay? That's all it is. Now, I'm no floral painter. I'm not a floral painter. Um, you know, I don't proclaim to have great talents when painting flowers, but I do like to be nice and loose with flowers. Nice and kind of free. Do you know what I mean? Let's take a bit of burnt cyan, huh? Let's put a couple of dabs of barn sienna here and there, just around the centres, look. Already we're getting some colour in the painting, aren't we? And it's all about kind of capturing the light, I find. So I'll take a little bit of that white or yellow, okay? And I'll just capture the light just on one or two of those. See? Just like that. Nice and subtle. Keep it nice and simple. Now let's try a nice vibrant yellow one. Let's take some of this cadmium yellow with cadmium yellow deep, or just cadmium yellow on its own. And I need to get some white. A nice white paint on my palette. This is a lovely colourful painting, isn't it? I can already see it. I can see it's going to look nice and colourful and rich and vibrant. Now, lots of thick paint. Look, cadmium yellow and a little white. Let's go and put some flowers here and there, look. Now, I, as I said, I'm no expert in painting flowers, but I'm just going to try and get the impression of some kind of petals popping out here and there. Do you know what I mean? All right, it's good. Perhaps one or two up there. Just cadmium yellow on its own, nothing else. No, see, nice and simple. Now I'll take a little rough flat brush look and take some burnt umber and just put a dab of burnt umber just in the center there. Just a little touch. And into that, perhaps even a touch of Naples yellow. And it's only just to kind of add a little bit of interest to those flowers. That's all. That's all it is. Now, I'm going to give those flowers a little bit of shadow. So some cyanide with some cadmium yellow. And that'll be a nice, warm, shadowy colour for some of those petals, okay? There we go. So look, isn't that wonderful? Now I'm going to take a small pointy brush next and just put in some stalks. Some thin, watery colour, this kind of nice light greeny colour we just made. 
let's put in some stalks. Look, nice and simple. Some stalks coming, and I'm going to go at kind of an angle so it's going into the painting, you see. Isn't that wonderful? And let's just take a little bit of very watery black and put a hint of shadow just on some of those, just here and there, okay? Just a very light flick. And we can even use that colour just to get some little grasses here and there. Look, some nice, simple grasses. Nothing too complicated. Not great. Isn't that looking wonderful so far? <coughs> Okay, I'm going to start doing the little daisies, okay? Because they're, they're really, really eye-catching. Um, I'm going to start with one up here. It's like, there's almost a hint of blue, a kind of a mauve blue in that one up there. I think that's absolutely wonderful. So I'm going to start with that one first. Now, I just quickly changed my um, turpentine and my tissue. So it's nice and clean again. And I'm just taking my small flat brush, okay? And I'm going to mix, <coughs> excuse me, a nice little mauve. So I'm going to take some phthalo blue. Now I'm using phthalo blue because it gives a nice rich colour. Um, cobalt blue, if you're trying to mix a mauve out of cobalt, it gives you a very sort of muted um, mauve kind of a colour. And that's not what I'm after. I'm after a nice rich kind of a mauve. So phthalo blue is perfect for that. Now I have a nice little mauve here. I'm just going to go up there and put in some of those petals just kind of very quickly like so okay <clears throat> excuse me and now what i'm going to do then is i'm going to take another small brush a small little round brush okay now it's not very pointy this brush it's not a very pointy brush um but it ha it's, it's kind of slightly splayed out um so it's not very pointy so I'm, with that i'm just going to take uh, a little white on the tip of that okay <clears throat> and make a nice little point on the tip of that brush okay look and just on the tips of those now will i zoom in because really it's very far away isn't it i think i should zoom in on the painting i think it would be much nicer no yeah i think that's fine right just on the tip of those <clears throat> i'm just going to go like that okay So the tip is catching the light. Understand? Now even a hint of Naples yellow, that would really... Okay, there we go. And it's very sort of, um, again, it's very kind of muted in some respects. <clears throat> it's a very kind of muted um, flower. Now I'm going to take a little bit of black, just a tiny bit of black, and just at the bottom of that flower, give it a little tiny bit of a shadow, okay? There we go. Now, there's a very dark kind of a green at the very base of that flower. I'm going to take some black and some yellow and give that a little, a very dark green um, little base. I don't know what it's called, but it's there, okay? A little dark base on that and then a hint of let's say burnt umber just at the very base okay <clears throat> now there we go and then from that i'm going to take my other small pointy brush and i am going to bring a stalk down from this i'm going to use this whitey kind of a green that i used earlier and i'm just going to basically go And down here then, it's going to sort of disappear as it comes down into the painting, do you understand? So you see what I mean? It kind of disappears. And then you see, you're going to have a little tiny hint of shadow just on that 
stalk coming down, okay? Now, I don't know which direction the light is coming from. It's just a very intense light up overhead. So I put a little bit of shadow just under there. <clears throat> I'll leave a file down like that, okay? So that is one flower done. Now, you could even go a little bit more blue on some of that flower. Um, it's still a kind of little bit muted. So a little bit more phthalo blue and a little bit of crimson just at the base of it. I think that's lovely. I love that. I think that's wonderful now. And again, um, if you look at the photographs, there's lots of kind of hints of colour sort of here and there. So for example, um, let's just kind of be very free now with this. Let's just put little things like this. Look, little hints of colour here and there. We're not kind of suggesting anything as such. We're just suggesting hints of colour kind of here and there around in the grass. Um, you know, it's just a suggestion. It's, it's all about just suggesting that there was lots of different things going on in the painting. Okay, you see, it's just kind of sort of hints of colour. Let's take some cyanide with some Naples yellow. Um, that could be a nice kind of a warm colour over here. So there could be <clears throat> some kind of um, a flower kind of popping up here and there. Sienna colour. That's lovely, isn't it? A uh, little hints of yellow popping through. Okay, do you understand what I mean? It's just sort of giving hints of colour. Now, you could even use your palette knife as well if you want. Uh, this is another fantastic tool, especially for this kind of painting. You could just, for instance, take some Naples yellow and let's take a hint of crimson. And let's just put hints of that. Look. Just suggest a nice bit of colour over here in this side. Some cyanide mixed in. Okay, there we go. You see, nice and simple. I kept it nice and simple. And then we could just, let's take a couple of dark colours. Let's take some burnt umber and some phthalo blue, okay? And let's just put a couple of little squiggles here and there, okay? Look. It's all about just creating a feeling in the painting. That's all it is. And I don't want to go too far with these little squiggles. Um, but just a hint of a few little flicks here and there. Just like nothing too dramatic. All right. So that's fine for there. Now let's do another one or two little daisies because I really love painting those daisies. They're wonderful, aren't they? <clears throat> right. A nice clean little flat brush. A small flat brush is perfect for this kind of work. Okay. A small, flat, synthetic brush. If you're using bristles, um, you're missing out because the bristles, uh, you can't get a nice kind of sharp edge with the bristles. Now, there's something I spotted on the photograph that's really lovely. I just want to get a very dark green for a moment, okay? Some black with that. And I want to get this a very kind of a dark I don't know what these flowers are called. They're wonderful. They're not kind of really flowers. They're kind of buds. Little buds of flowers. And I don't know what they are. They're beautiful. But I can see there's a lovely kind of effect around those flowers. So a little bit of cadmium yellow with some cyanide. And put a couple of dabs around that. Couple of dabs around there. You see what I mean? And let's go again. Let's get some cad yellow and a little hint of sienna as well. And then take some white with cad yellow and just give it a hint of light, okay? Just a hint. And then we'll give them a nice little stalk. Let's go for a nice dark brown kind of a stalk, okay? Let's 
There we go. Now let's just cut back in front of that with some yellow. Isn't it lovely? It's all just about getting a nice balance in the painting, so not having too much on one side. Now I know there are a lot of little white daisies here. I want to crack on with those daisies. Let's really crack on and get these daisies finished, yes? I'm excited about daisies. Can you believe that? That's the highlight of my day. Daisies. Isn't it wonderful? So why not? And it's great when painting makes you feel like this. Right, I'm going to take my flat brush with lots of thick white paint. This is kind of, a lot of this is kind of dried in apart from the thicker parts of the um, painting. Most of it is kind of dried in. Let's go down, let's go here. Okay, let's create, no, where do I know? Let me see. Let's go up here and go, there's one at an angle here, isn't there? Let's try that one with a nice angle on it. Just putting little flicks. And as it comes down, then it's going to get kind of wider, isn't it? The flicks are going to get much wider. And flatter as well. Look, so let's go in like this with one. And we have a couple here. Now, these ones on the front are kind of foreshortened. And <clears throat> that's what they say um, in painting. When something is foreshortened, it means that you can't see, you cannot see the full opened opening of the flower. So it's foreshortened, which means it's turned at a slight angle. So you're almost looking at the flower side on. Do you understand? That's what that's what they mean when they say foreshortened. You'll hear that word uh, with people who paint daisies and things like that, uh, flowers in general. So foreshortened means that it's sort of turned sideways slightly. So you can't see the full flower. Uh, like this one here, that's foreshortened. These ones, not so much, because you can kind of see most of, the, of that flower. Okay, now there's one. And what I'm gonna do then is take a little bit of this bluey color that I just mixed earlier, and put a little bit of that blue on the front leaves here, okay? Now the trick to this is to just do um, quick, brush strokes, uh, not to kind of go over the brush stroke too many times. So even the ones would do just like that. And you could even put a little bit on some of these just there, okay? Now, you could kind of get, get the impression that I'm trying to get. You can kind of see it a little bit, I hope. Uh, let's me make, I'm just mixing another, another little tiny bit of crimson and thalo blue here, just a nice little mauve color, okay? A blue kind of a mauve and I just want to kind of get that nice rich bluey shadowy color just on some of those perhaps a little bit more pink okay that's fine that will do now rather than cleaning this brush constantly and going over with different colors I'm just going to take another brush okay it's the very same it's a cheap synthetic flat brush all right um rather than me <clears throat> having to clean the brush every two seconds now in the middle of that there's a nice rich yellow isn't there let's take some cadmium yellow and some cyanide and i think that would be a nice orangey kind of a color for the middle of that okay just like so Give that a wipe, and I'm just using thick paint now on its own, okay? Nothing else. Let's pick up a little touch of cyanide on the tip of the brush, and let's just dab little hints of cyanide here and there. And then I'm going to hit, put a hint of umber just at the back here, okay? Where it's kind of in shadow, just a little bit. Just dabbing with the brush, you see? Oh, there we are. How's that? Isn't that wonderful? <clears throat> and something else now that I noticed I'm just going to take a little bit of white okay and I'm just going to lengthen one or two of these here okay just to make them that little bit longer that's all there just so you can see the flower is a little bit open slightly just a little bit 
a little bit more. Now, so that, my friends, is one flower. It was one daisy pretty much finished. Isn't that wonderful? I'm then going to take some cadmium yellow with some of the white, plenty of turpentine, and give this a nice stalk. Let's go for a nice bendy one, yes? And then it disappeared down into the grass then. Look, isn't that wonderful? Now, let's fix the flower just behind that. Let's just give it a little hint of Naples yellow with some cadmium yellow. Okay. In fact, I might put that stalk right through. What do you think, yes? Let's put the stalk right through the flower. Push that flower right back. And then give the stalk a little shadow. It needs a shadow. I think every stalk needs a bit of a shadow, doesn't it? Especially under the flower here. And it'll come down then and run off slightly, you see? Just like so. And you can even put a hint of burnt umber in under the stalk as well, just to darken it slightly, just there. Now, remember always sit back and take a look. That's nice. Let's go over some more and let's get some kind of free, free flowing daisies now as well. Let's just, we don't have to be kind of constricted to um, very slow detail. We can kind of put some nice little flicks in as well. Let's go here. Um, let's go like that. You see? Let's just go for it. And there. And just like that, okay? You see? You can't just have a bit of fun. Don't be shy. Let's go back in now to our cyana with some yellow. And go in here. And give that a nice bit of colour there. Then add some Naples yellow to the top of that. Just create a little circle. Um, perhaps some of nice rich cadmium yellow as well. Nice and thick look and lo lovely rich thick paint. Okay, and a little burnt umber. Just kind of on one side, dabbing very lightly, okay? See, it's just catching. And just catching a little bit of shadow there. And then we can just add a little hint of shadow to one or two of the petals, kind of just coming out like this, okay? There we go. That's fine, that's enough. Let's go again. Lots of fun now this is. Lots and lots of fun. Let's take some more white. Again, clean your brush in between to keep it nice and clean, all right? Let's take some white. Uh, let's go down here now and give it a nice one, say, around here. I'm thinking here, yes? Okay, like that. Nice bright brush strokes, nice solid brush strokes. All right, and at this side we can just go like so. Okay, that looks good. And let's get a nice big center now inside in this one. Some nice bright orange, nice big circle. Like so. Clean the brush. Let's go over a hint of cyanide. Couple of little dabs here and there with cyanide. And then lastly, little hint of burnt umber. Just around kind of the base. Just to sort of sit it, sit that down into the flower. Okay. Now again, I will get some shadow colour, so I'll take some phthalo blue, a little crimson, and I'll put some nice shadow colour in there, a little hint of it. Okay, 
just a little. I might make it actually a little bit more blue with a hint of white. I think that might make a much nicer shadow. Is that better? I think that's a bit better, you know. I don't know that. Now, we can also hit the edges of this with some white. Bring it in. Okay, just like so. And that's fine. Now, again, a stalk. Let's get a nice stalk on this one. Let's take a nice bright yellowy green, okay? Plenty of turpentine, a little bit of white, a little bit of that yellow, and we have a nice bright green. Sort of disappearing down into the painting, into the darkness of the painting, you see? Disappearing away. And again, we have a little bit of shadow here and there under that stalk, just like so. And then I will give it a hint of white just here. Now, there we are. Isn't that coming on lovely? And we'll do another one. I will put another nice little daisy uh, let me see perhaps one up here one which is very kind of sporadic it's just kind of popping up um, the leaves aren't really in uniform it's just sort of something like that you see what i mean it's very kind of um all over the place you know what I mean? Just like that, and a little bit of brown. There and there. Perhaps a hint of yellow. Wouldn't go amiss. There we are. Okay. Um, a hint of yellow in maybe some of these ones here. All right, that looks good. And we'll put a bit of shadow, just a little hint of the shadowy colour. I'm going to put just here and there, just under one or two of those, okay? And I'll give that a nice bright, colourful stalk again. Going nice and colourful. And let's bring that down. Okay, like that, disappearing. And we'll give it a little bit of darkness as well. Just underneath up there. Okay, looks fine. Absolutely fine. And I'm thinking, well, you know, we're doing well now, we're quite doing quite well. I might take my fan brush. I'm just going to come up, come up with ideas now to think of different things. Take a little white on the top of my fan brush, okay? Just like that. And let's go down and give little tiny dabs of white just here and there. Look. We're just kind of suggesting... Little clumps of little flowers just here and there. Just to break up this painting. How about one or two just down here, okay? A couple like that. Alright, just to start to break it up, loosen it up a little bit. Um, and we could even put one or two 
with a hint of natal jello even, just over here, okay? Very gently. And then, I'm thinking perhaps a splash of red. Let's take some cadmium red, and let's put a hint of cadmium red here and there, just to sort of catch your eye, okay? That's all. It's just, it doesn't have to be anything in particular. Do you understand? Now, I want to put some more stalks in. I want to get some more of those lovely stalks. They're quite nice. So I want to get some of the bright colour and put some stalks up there. Like so. And then I'm going to just refine some of the petals on some of the um, daisies so with my pointy brush look I'm just going to refine some of those with that lots of thick paint now okay just white thick paint on its own with nothing else and lash on lots of this thick white colour okay uh, let's come down here and try some of this one just to really give them a bit of a kind of a spark do you know what i mean that's all just to really kind of brighten them up because these daisies are the focus they're the focal point of the painting i think so just by giving them a little hint of colour just here and there just a little a big just give them a nice impact of colour that's all um and we could maybe just put one suggest one small one over here just to give the painting a little bit of balance okay So it's just not all one-sided. Just a little small one like that. And let's put a bit of yellow just in the centre. And some cyanide around it like so. And then perhaps just a nice stalk coming down. And disappearing off. Now you could give it a little hint of a shadow if you want. I think just very subtly. Just a little bit. And I think we are done. A nice simple painting of some daisies. Um, a nice kind of impression of daisies, I would say. Let me know what you think. It's just a very kind of a free painting. That's all it is. And I have a frame now for this as well. I do have a little frame. Perhaps one or two little dollops of white here and there. Up like that. And even perhaps up around here as well. Okay. There. The last thing I must do is sign. So we have to sign the painting, don't we? So let me zoom back a little now. And I come down here and sign the painting. S. Conway. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been lots of fun doing this. It really, really has. Nice and colourful. Look at that. See what we have created just from a couple of colours and some very loose brush strokes. Isn't it fantastic? Just don't be afraid. Give it a go. You know, I didn't plan that this would turn out anything like it turned out, to be honest. I was imagining it would turn out absolutely awful. But look, I'm pleasantly surprised. It has turned out very, very nice. Now, let me get a frame, because I have a frame. I did um, make a frame for this. Let me just clean my hands first with some tissue before I go and get in this frame. And so you know, I might actually just give it one or two very loose grasses. Um, perhaps just kind of one popping through here, in, just into that light area. 
I'm thinking just to kind of do, do you know, to add one just here and there. Okay, I'll leave it now because I'm doodling. Right, here's my frame I made earlier. And let me pop this up here now and I'll show you how this looks. Ah, so look at that. Ah, huh? look at that. I tell you something. Let me zoom right back in here now. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? I can just see that now hanging in the restaurant on the wall and lots of people passing it looking. Isn't that going to be just wonderful? So there we go. A nice simple painting of some loose flowers, some daisies, a bit of this and a bit of that. And kept nice and simple, okay? Try it. Don't be shy. Just grab your paints and try it. That's all I can say, okay? That's all I can say. Let me clip on my microphone here so you can hear me a little better. Uh, there we go. Now, thank you so much for watching. Let me fix this thing. There we go, that's better. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. It's been absolutely fantastic. I'm very, very happy with that. Simple, loose, but effective, I think. And lovely and warm and colourful, spring colours. Um, go on, have a go. Just try something similar if you want, different colours. Mix and match, just grab lots of paint, grab some brushes and have a go, all right? I'll be back next week again. Um, I think it's something like, maybe this tall white sailboat or something like that. Let's see. Um, thank you so much. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And um, you can support me on Patreon if you wish to support me. Go there, there's lots more tutorials there as well. If you want to take a look, um, I would be delighted. Thank you so much. I'll see you again next week. Happy painting and God bless.